Hey everybody, welcome back to Video So Terrican Returning Series, is that an analog in your pocket? Are you just happy to see me? And today I'm going over what I would consider some of my favorite hidden gem arcade cores on the analog pocket. Now do be aware that I've already done some of my favorite arcade cores to play, the ones that might be more obvious, and this is stuff that I think maybe people will skip past. But because Analog Pocket does have a much more limited arcade library than Mr. FPJ, some of these might be familiar to some of you. I did the best I could here with also talking about games that I think a lot of people maybe never played before. And right off the top, the first one's going to be Captain Commando. This is running on the Capcom CPS 1 board, and if you can't tell already, it is a beat-em-up. And while some people do know about this game, if I hear Capcom beat-em-ups mentioned from this era, I'm going to hear about Alien vs. Predator, I'm going to hear about The Punisher, I'm going to hear about the Dungeons and Dragons game, and obviously I'm going to hear about Final Fight, but I do not hear anyone ever mention Captain Commando, and that's just an absolute bummer, because this is every bit as good as anything Capcom ever did in the beat-em-up space, and it of course has that absurd Capcom charm to it. We are playing as a baby in a robot who just jumped in a larger robot, basically becoming a Russian nesting doll of baby robot goodness, and that's not a sentence I ever expected to utter in my life. But if you like beat-em-ups and you've gone through a lot of the arcade stuff, the splatter houses, the Final Fights, and otherwise of the world and you've yet to turn on Captain Commando you definitely should check this out and obviously it has a two-player option as well so if you dock your pocket you can bring a friend along and have an absolute blast because this is basically Final Fight meets Streets of Rage in my opinion it kind of feels like a little bit of an homage to Sega's properties but obviously on the Capcom side it has so many great stages an incredible soundtrack really good graphics for the Capcom CPS and just that overall Capcom charm and fun you want out of a game when you sit down with your analog pocket and decide to play some arcade games and again I'm not sure why this one seems to be forgotten about I even hear about Battle Circuit more than I do Captain Commando and that is just really strange and I love that they have a star wipe to go between screen transitions something I'd make fun of as a filmmaker but I absolutely love here in this game this is just a 10 out of 10 fun beat em up. It's got everything you need and nothing else. The runtime is long enough to have fun, but not so long that you think you're getting bored. And if you get sick of playing as a giant robot baby, then just become Mummy Commander here and fight as a pink mummy with two daggers that stabs everyone. This game is just hilarious and fun in equal measure, and if you've never played it before, you definitely owe it to yourself to check it out. Leave me a comment down below and tell me what your favorite hidden gem arcade game is on the analog pocket because I'd be curious to hear what you guys say. Now this next one, depending on who you are, you might consider cheating. This is Rage of the Dragons on the Neo Geo. But of course the Neo Geo was nothing but an arcade board put in a fancy case and sold as a home console. So as far as I'm concerned, this does count. There's a metric crap ton of fighting games to play on Neo Geo, some of them ranging from the best games ever made like Mark of the Wolves to ranging in quality that you would never want to play them again. I would say Rage of the Dragons is a solid B plus tier fighting game, but because it is made in part by Noise Factory, it has a ton of fun as far as the graphics and the soundtrack are concerned. And you add a really competent fighting game engine on top of that and you have something that I definitely recommend you check out and it hits that hidden gem status because I never hear anyone talk about Rage of the Dragons outside of Neo Geo collecting circles. And obviously the Neo Geo library is vast and you probably have some games on your pocket if not the entire library, but if you've been skipping over Rage of the Dragons, I can't tell you enough that you should 100% check this game out. There's so much fun to be had here, there's so many different characters, and it has a wickedly fun sense of humor. It's not quite to the level of Matra Melee, my favorite Neo Geo fighting game of all time, but I don't think I could put Power Instinct in the hidden gem category, where something like Rage of the Dragons, I feel feel like 7 out of 10 people watching this will probably never have played it. Tell me down below if you even know about this game and whether or not you have played it, I would be curious. And that's the fun part about something like Neo Geo. It's got a big enough library where there's probably games out there you've never played before. And it's always fun to find a great new fighting game, especially if you kind of exhausted all the typical stuff, like the Samurai Showdowns, the King of Fighters, stuff like that on your system. This is just one of those games. It has great graphics, it has great music, it has great controls, a good fighting game engine. Engine, it keeps you coming back for more and I will say it also has a wicked difficulty even for an SNK Neo Geo based game so it's definitely going to kill you the first couple times you play it but stick with it I think you're going to have a ton of fun and I just want more Rage of the Dragons players in the world give it 15-20 minutes I bet you're going to have a lot of fun now on a game that I think really straddles the border between Hidden Gem or not is going to be Mercs on the Capcom CPS. I hear so many more people talking about the Contra Cores and all the other running guns, but I've yet to hear anyone mention playing Mercs on their analog pocket. This is an outstanding game. 
It's like Shock Troopers on the Neo Geo, but made by Capcom and a little bit earlier, and this is just an absolute blast. It is running gun action to the nth degree. It just works for what it does, and it also has an awesome soundtrack, one of my favorites on the CPS, actually. So go ahead and listen for like 35 seconds, and I'll come back and tell you about more why this game is amazing and show you some other hidden gems. But enjoy. Like everything from that Capcom generation, the sound effects are a little bit louder than I would like them to be, but the music underneath is swelling and really does sell the illusion of war. And you'll see here, at least in the first part of the capture, I do have some screen filters turned on to show you what those sort of scan lines would look like on a Tate game, because they do pivot themselves. You're going to see they go vertical here, and in just a moment I will turn the screen filters off. Just to remind you that there's more than one way to look at every single game on the analog pocket, and you really do get the option to decide what you want to do. But the best part about this game is you're going to see there's two other insert coin icons at the bottom and that means you can bring friends and having more than one player in this game is just absolute chaos in the best way possible. And you'll see here I have turned those screen filters off. But if you've seen mercs in the game listings under the multi arcade category and you haven't loaded it up yet or you thought about playing it and haven't done it, definitely check it out. Now moving a little bit back in time but keeping with that Tate screen orientation, this is ASO from SNK. It's a mouthful letters but it's an absolutely fun shmup that would go on to have a sequel on the Neo Geo but this is earlier than the Neo Geo hardware and it seems like most people don't realize SNK existed and did things before they made their home console and made their splash with arcade perfect games in your living room. If you're looking for a fun new shmup to play, definitely add this to your list. It has got that classic 80s challenge to it. It's got fun graphics, awesome music, and I feel like it is going to be a game that most people have never encountered. Maybe you've played Alpha Mission 2 or ASO 2, on the Neo Geo, but I feel like most people have not played the original. This is one of those old school shmups, but it has some nice bullet patterns, it's got a lot of great enemies, and it's got a fair amount of challenge. It's not going to be the hardest game you've ever played, it's not going to be the easiest, it's going to be right in that sweet spot in between. And it's one of those games that really isn't self-explanatory as to what the title would even mean. You see ASO, you have no idea what the genre is, and if you've never heard of the game before, it might be something you've skipped over 20-30 times on your analog pocket you've never popped into. And that's kind of the point of these videos, to try to get you to play something new, something different, or to talk about games that maybe you have played and commiserate with me down in the comments as to why they're not more popular. Because SNK had a bright and vibrant life long before the Neo Geo went onto arcade floors and into living rooms. This is just one of those games that comes along with it. If you're looking for a fun new shmup and you've played all of the stuff that would be obvious on the CPS 1, CPS 2, and some of the other arcade cores, definitely play ASO. I think you're going to find a lot of fun here and stick with it. The first level is pretty easy, but as you get further into the game, the difficulty is definitely going to ramp itself up and any boss that looks like this is definitely going to be something that I want to see and I think you're going to want to see it too. But tell me down below if you ever played the game, I would be curious. Now moving on to the next game and back to the beat em up and Capcom genres, this is Armored Warriors and I feel like some people are going to know about this one, but again, for some strange reason, Capcom made a ton of awesome games back in the day, but if they weren't attached to a licensor franchise that stayed popular up until today, it seems like a lot of people just forgot about them. Armored Warriors is another awesome beat em up and I try to keep this list from not just being a Capcom hidden gem list, but it kind of hewed that direction anyway. If you like mechs, if you like beat em ups, this game is going to give you a ton and I love the mechanic as well certain enemies are going to drop certain items which you can then put onto your mech and use to gain additional attacks there's a decent amount of strategy in this one great music great graphics and just another ton of fun on the beat em up front but again this is one of those games I don't see it in arcades anymore I don't usually hear many people talk about it if I hear anyone talk about awesome beat em ups on the Capcom side on analog pocket I feel like I'm hearing about alien versus predator almost every Every single time but this game is legit fun it's multiplayer support so you can bring your friends along and it's got another awesome soundtrack one more 30 second sample I'll be back with some more games I think you need to play
a super fun soundtrack and a super fun game. And again, I'm not sure why some of these games just don't seem to capture the public's imagination like other games do. I'm pretty sure anyone who watches my channel has definitely played Final Fight at least once or Alien vs Predator once, but I feel like a game like this is going to be one of those blind spots where maybe 5 out of 10 people, 50%, are going to say maybe they've heard about the game but never played it before. And I know I tried to keep this away from just being a Capcom list and I did a decent job, but we have one more Capcom game to talk about before we close the video out. There is a large lineage of Mega Man games in the arcades that basically take just the boss battles of a Mega Man game and turn them into an actual arcade experience. Mega Man 2 The Power Battle is definitely the better of the two Mega Man games in my opinion. I played a metric crap ton of this on my CPS2 hardware before I sold my multi just to use Mr. FPGA and it is just a lot of fun. This is just the boss battle from Mega Man and some of those boss battles are some of the most fun you can have in the Mega Man games. And and just like in the console experiences, every single boss you beat here, you're going to get their weapon and be able to use it for a limited time against the next opponent you face. There's so much strategy in which levels you take on in which order. And because this runs on the Capcom CPS2, it has absolutely spectacular graphics. This might be, in my opinion, the prettiest game on Capcom CPS2 outside of something like Street Fighter Alpha 3. All of the effects, all of the colors, all of the sprites and backgrounds and different things you see just scream Capcom in the best way possible and I know a lot of people probably haven't played this game before because they think of a Mega Man game and they think of a 2D action platformer you don't think of a boss gauntlet but that's the thing about this Mega Man game it's pure distilled Mega Man fun all in the boss fight format it's tight it's fast-paced it's everything you want out of Mega Man without any of the quote-unquote filler and I'm not trying to say that Mega Man games have filler I'm just using that as an expression and honestly this is one of those games it's not really talked about as much as pretty much anything else Capcom made back in the day, but it is another awesome game and another thing that you can just go ahead and play on your analog pocket. You'll find that under the Capcom CPS2 course from Hotego, and you definitely should check it out. If you have played this game before, leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think. I'm sure most people know about it, but I'm not sure if anyone's going to actually have played it before. Or maybe you guys will surprise me and pretty much everyone will say you've played Mega Man 2 The Power Battle. But honestly, check it out and if you haven't played it for some years, it's time to revisit it. But that is the rundown of my list of my favorite quote unquote hidden gem cores for Analog Pocket. Some of these are going to be a little bit more well known than others. Some of them are going to be a little bit more of a deep cut. But the great part is there's so many games on Analog Pocket, we can actually talk about things I would consider to be hidden gems. And tell me again down below what your one favorite hidden gem on the Pocket is on the arcade side because I would be curious. And maybe if this video does well, I'll do some hidden gems for each individual console and handheld platform as well. Tell me down below if you'd like to see that. But short of that, grab your pocket, go into the arcade section, start playing some games. See you next time. Bye-bye.